In this section, we'll try and answer your questions about what it's like to go to Download Festival, things we recommend, and things to avoid. This time, transport. There are lots of different ways to get to Download Festival when you go. It can be easy and it can be complicated, depending on where you're coming from and your mode of transport. It's right next to the airport, East Midlands Airport, which I would expect people to come via, you know, if the people are coming from Europe, maybe, um, I believe there are flights to East Midlands Airport from Europe, but uh, obviously if you're in the UK, it's unlikely that you're going to go there. Um and uh, it's, it's a place for uh, bands to land. <laughs> Iron Maiden famously landed their huge aeroplane uh, to uh, play there a few years ago. Remember that? I I wasn't in the arena. But I heard a lot of commotion, and then I had to watch the uh, the highlight video afterwards to remember. Oh yeah, that, that's that's why everyone was kicking off. That's cool. Yeah, it was it was really cloudy, so you didn't yeah. see the plane. <laughs> but I imagine they may do something similar this year. Uh, sorry for 2022 of course they're the headline of the saturday so i'd assume they'd be uh they'd be doing the same thing maybe might get a second opportunity with touch wood if it's sunny hopefully with better weather yeah. yeah and you know it's pretty obvious that it's if you've been to download before you know about the airports you can't really escape it and it is it is literally next door so if you are coming in via the airport you could literally walk it but you know if you if you're walking it with all of your gear then it's a little bit of a trek, but, you know, it's, it is walking distance, really. Do they have, I'm sure they have shuttle buses, do they? I'm pretty sure they do. Um, in, the, in the past, that's where the, um, the drop-off point was, the, um, the airport car park, and uh, they'd always, and I assume they'd always done a, a shuttle bus um, from there. They also do um, a shuttle bus from uh, the centre of Derbyshire, and, I, and Derbyshire, sorry, Derby, yeah. and, and from, and I, th- I think they, they've got a bus from Nottingham as well, so mm. there's, so if you're local to those areas, then you've got the shuttle bus, shuttle bus to get you straight there. That's the thing about the, being the airport, is you've got the, the transport infrastructure, uh, all of the transport links that can go in there from various places not too far away, so it's it's not a bad place to drop into if you're coming via the airport. However, if you're coming on a train, which a lot of people do, how far is the train station? train station is about a five, ten minute taxi drive away but there's a there is a taxi rank out there waiting for people to come straight off the train i did it i've done it for the last i did it in 2017 did it in 2018 did it by myself the minute that you get off the train there'll be a taxi rank waiting for, for people and you'll never have to get it alone um even the day before download when obviously we stay in a hotel for the night before um there were people queuing up to get into taxis and they basically get like about six or seven in a row like six seven seater taxis and just start piling people in and just yeah. asking where they're asking whereabouts they're going because the majority of people will be heading into Castle Donington or actually on the if it's if it's the Wednesday of the festival they'll be heading to the, to the festival. So if if you go via the train, don't fret too much about getting from the train station to the festival because there will be taxis waiting outside for you. And what is the station? Is it is is it Donington or is it Derby or what? It is not. It is East Midlands Airport. Um, no, East Midlands Parkway. Oh, okay. So yeah, so uh, everything is, is literally central to the East East Midlands sort of name. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's it's really close. I'm not. I don't really know where it is. I don't think I've ever seen it actually. But it's basically at the airport, is it? Pretty much. Yeah. If you're if if you were looking to obviously go to the airport, that would be the train station to to go to. So East Midlands Parkway oh. is is the um is the train station uh, to get to to get to Castle Donington to or to at least make the, the journey easier. I, I guess because you were coming from the south, that generalised area, the south. The south. Uh, that you you had to take a connecting train, is that right? I had to take a few trains, yeah. Did you? Yeah, I've, I think, the so the first year I did it, I had to get from where I lived in South Bucks to Reading, which is in South Berkshire. And then from there up to Derby, and then from Derby to East Midlands. And how did you find it with all of your uh, paraphernalia, all of your, um, you know, all of your bags and uh, booze and food and God knows what else that you had with you? I like to think I am a physically strong person, okay. and it didn't it didn't cause me much hassle. But um, yeah, being that person that's dragging all the crap through the train station, trying to avoid people. 
that's the biggest issue. If I had any advice about people that are taking the train, just try as best you can to pack lightly. Was it busy? Yeah, even even during even during the day, if it's not even not rush hour, even during the day, it's, um, train stations can get quite busy. Right. Okay. And what sort of train is it? A big train or a little train? Big trains. Yes. Uh, these are these would be a bit um, for for so my two particular journeys. Um, they were they were like cross going cross across country, so they're quite long, big trains. Even going from Derby to East Midlands, so I think the Derby train on that route goes into Leicester, so that's like a two three carriage. Yeah. Small small type train. And is it a nice journey or not? <laughs> if you've got a couple of cans of beers and plenty of music and plenty of entertainment, you'd be fine. Okay. Are they are they pretty regular or did you have to, like, is it one every day? <laughs> um, one every day. Um, no. Um, the, the longest you'd have to wait would probably be about 45 minutes um, from Because people Derby. miss trains, don't they? Of course they do. It's, it, it happens all the time. Um, from Derby to East Midlands, I think... On that Tuesday, I believe I did. I think the trains were like every half hour, forty-five minutes. So if you miss one, you're not waiting around too long. That's very regular, isn't it? That's all right. Yeah, that I can cope with. But if it's every bloody hour or every hour and a half, no, it's a mm. bit of a snooze, snooze fest. Yeah, because it might be nicer to take the train. I'm always in favour of leaving the car behind <laughs> because. Uh, big festivals like this you can be pissing about in with with trying to park the car for absolutely ages trying to get out at festivals can be a nightmare just because there are so many thousands of people there all trying to do the same thing as you so i'm all, always in favor if you can of you know taking trains and stuff but if you are going via the car uh, there are motorway links it is Bang on the M1, isn't it? It's right next to the M1. Yeah, it's it's it's, it's slap bang. I think do you know what? I honestly think it's slap bang in the middle of the M1, linking London to um to the north. Like it's it's very it's very easy to spot. You'd have to come off the M the M1 and go onto the A four five three, and that would take you straight into Castle Donington. And it, to be honest, they say don't follow your sat nav. Follow the yellow signs that say download. Yeah, I imagine, I imagine the um, the sat nav will probably take you round to the main stage entrance or the um, RIP entrance instead of actually instead of the actual car park. I don't really know. I mean, I've never, I've never, I've always followed the advice and followed the yellow signs. So I don't know where your sat nav ends up taking you. But to be honest, it's quite countrysidey. Yeah. Well, I mean, I reckon that this, your sat nav will try and take you towards the racetrack. Oh, it could do, couldn't it? Yeah, the Donington circuit. It might try and take you towards that. So yeah, so set set your your sat nav to I don't know. Well, you can set it for for there, and then when you start to pick up the yellow signs, just follow those, yeah. can't you? Yeah. And the M1 is 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 easy to find for everybody, isn't it? Really, <laughs> no matter where you are. I've <laughs> with the uh, my, my my house is is practically um, it's about forty minutes from the M1. I've worked this all out, honestly. Honestly, like I, I think it was the first year I got my car, and I had to drive. And I had to drive for the first time. I looked at like so many possible routes that I'd have you? to take. Car parks. Now, um, the situation for car parks is going to be slightly different. So the information that we give you may not be a hundred percent right. But what they normally tend to do is put you in some of the fields around Donington Park Circuit. That is correct. The last few years. Before 2019, all weekend ticket holders were put into what they call the South Car Park, and then we have to walk over the bridge or walk across the road to get to the main queue. 2019, we were moved into the West Car Park, which was, if you were looking at the Donaldson Circuit on an, on Google Maps, you're literally on the left of the, the circuit, the Tarmac Lake, and they've, they're have they going to use the fields that we used in 2019, and they're hopefully going to try and use the other other field um, behind it as well as part of parking and camping in the past you used to have to park a long way away from where you were actually camping and so it really was a, a hike up and down hills that were muddy and uh, full of stones and quite difficult to to get through with all your shit and sometimes you'd even have to go back to your car to do another run uh, with all of your shits that you brought with you, your kitchen sink and all that, and it was it was quite difficult. I mean, I'm not going to lie; it was it was it's it's a proper hike, so you'd need to bring boots with you and stuff like that. But um, I believe that in the future, uh, 2022 onwards, the plan is to move the car parks a lot closer. Yeah, to be at least a lot closer to where people were likely to camp, and then obviously you'd you'd be able to set up easier. 
and then still be a good only about two minutes or so from the village and then about between five and ten minutes from the arena yeah the future is bright with the organization of the car park but what what it was a veterans- fucking nightmare i mean it really what? was wasn't it i i hated it i hated having to walk especially if it's wet oh my god it's the fucking worst um yeah so anything they do to improve that is very very welcome yeah i mean 2017 2018 was absolutely fine because it didn't rain for the first two days um or i don't think it rained at all actually in 2018 but 2019 2016 um no 2019 sorry was it pissed down the entire time 2016 was fantastic weather for the first two days and then as soon as friday hit it obviously it the monsoon came yeah and getting out of the car parks at that time i mean they had to sometimes to bring in tractors to help cars out of the mud and i i did see i did see a few wheel spinning cars as if they were on ice um it it was in 2016 that was insane yeah it has improved since then i mean there is still a long way to go i mean uh, you know i'm reserving judgment on whether they've managed to improve it or not until i see it in 2022 but you know it it can only get better is (laughs) from what what i've experienced that it got to the point where you used to be able to rent like these little wheelbarrow things as you reached the edge of the circuit to to put your stuff into to wheel it down because you might you, you know obviously you don't want to have to carry everything on your back or in your hands or whatever and you could get a big sort of blue wheelbarrow thing that you could rent i don't know how much that was but i always find that was that's little that's for me that was always too little too late because yeah. it was quite close to, quite close to the front of the queue it's a 20 pound deposit hell, that's a lot of money for that to you to, to do that yeah oh uh, yeah I, to me it wasn't worth it was, no. wasn't worth investing in because yeah it just it was too close to the too close yeah. to the front of the queue and just, just bring a just bring up like a, a, a not a wheelbarrow. What, what have we got? It's like what a cage we... on wheels or something that you get from. Well, we got ours from Costco, didn't we? But um, we did uh, the little pulley thing. It's like a garden sort of tool thing. I don't know what the other are called. <laughs> what is it? Oh Christ! Yeah, I, yeah. Right. Well, we know what we're talking about. Nobody else might know what we're talking about. But yeah. Little little carry thing on wheels. Anyway, um, yeah, so we've got other guides to, to talk about. That. <laughs> so there's plenty of advice <laughs> that we've given you in the past. Go and have a listen to one of those. Now, not everybody wants to take a plane to download. Not everybody wants the, the train. Some people don't even want to use the car. Some people want to take the bus. So there is the Big Green Coach Company which famously runs to a lot of different festivals around the UK all the time. And they, if you're on their emailing list, they're constantly emailing you about places that you can go to. Yeah, they're, 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 they're drop-off or their pick-up points. I think there's about, there's about like 50 drop-off or pick-up points around the UK, including like Reading, Plymouth, Swindon, et cetera, et cetera, just to name a couple in the south. But yeah, it includes your ticket as well. So if you can't get your own transport, i.e. use a car or you don't want to use the train or use a plane, <laughs> apparently... Yeah, I definitely recommend Big Green Coach. Well, what option have you got? You're going to walk. <laughs> if you don't want a plane, train, or car, you need a bus, don't you? Hang on, hang on. You mentioned walking then, and I'm not going to mention. I'm not going to say walking, but there are people that do a charity bike ride to download. I think it starts in London, and they cycle to Castle Donington for the Friday. They must be those people who bring absolutely nothing. They've probably got their stuff already already there. It's already arrived. Pro- it's, their gear has probably arrived prior to them starting the cycle. I imagine, like there are there are RIP guests that have obviously set up camper vans or whatnot, and they just cycle there for charity. I want to stay in the actual Park Farm hotel. Well, why don't you give it a go one year? Because you can't, you can't, you can't do it, can you? Because it's all oh. it's always booked up. Oh um, well, I mean, we we we're, we're going to camp there together in yes. the summer. Yes. Oh, um, I have, yeah, I have looked at the, I was, you know, I think I was talking to you about getting um, a camper van again, and just yes, uh, you did, yeah, yeah. Um, and the the prices have doubled. <laughs> oh shit! <laughs> because they've updated their fleet of camper vans, and so they're all nice and shiny, uh, they're the nice newer ones instead so of the old bangers it, from nineteen ninety six. Is that is that a no then on that, or do you still think no. you're gonna? Well, I, I still want to do it because if it does piss down like it's 2016, then I want to be dry and I'd like to do it. Yeah, yeah, no, don't blame you. Don't blame you at all. Since I've got the option, I might as well. Um, so the Big Green Coach Company gives you a 100% refundable coach ticket. This is all information that from their website. If you choose the Flexi ticket option during booking, 
Um, weekend return coach arrives on Wednesday, Thursday or Friday and returns on the Monday. Uh, a day return coach, if you're just going for the day, uh, Friday, Saturday or Sunday, obviously you won't be going there on the Wednesday because that's for people camping. There is a deposit scheme, secure your seats for just a tenner and you won't pay the rest until a few weeks before the festival, which doesn't sound too bad to me that. Sit back and relax and put your ho- put up your horns <laughs> and, <laughs> and get, to, get to know some fellow festival f- goers. Um, all weekend coaches leave on Monday, climb aboard, all parties out and sleep all the way home. It does remind me actually of when I first went to download in 2013 as a steward and I was working the whole weekend and I went there on a coach with my colleagues and returned on a coach. Uh, it was all right, actually. It was quite, it was nice. It's convenient. Um, except for when I was the last person aboard the coach because they nearly went off without me. Um, <laughs> that just sounds so typical. <laughs> that's the only thing is that, uh, um, you know, if, if you're waiting for coaches amongst hundreds of other people mm. um, and your coach is about to leave and they can't find you, that's, you know, that's tricky because how are you going to get home? You know, you can't take a plane. <laughs> you can't take a train because all your shit's on the coach. Um, anyway, uh, so, I, you know, it, you've got options there and, you know, not not each one will suit everybody. But I, I, I'm quite keen on the idea of getting on a train, actually. It's not too bad. The, like I said, the only piece of advice I would give would be not to bring the kitchen sink with you. Just try and be as minimalist as possible yeah. with um, your camping gear. I think I did okay. Bought stuff at the festival when I did it, so it wasn't too bad. I think once I drank all my beer, I had an extra bag to to put in all the stuff that I bought from the festival. Oh right, wow. Yeah. The, the other thing about the car parks is there is a charge to use the car parks. You have to um, pay for a, a a thing with your ticket uh, usually, and they'll send it you through the post. You get like a little sort of a thing, to, like a hook thing, cardboard hook thing to hang from your rear view mirror with your name and your phone number on it so that if any if there's any explosions they can give you a ring your car's on fire <laughs> um, yes yeah, it's, it's it's only it's um it's 21 pounds it used to be just 20 but the 20 the one added pound um goes towards a, a charity or a, a company that are trying to reduce um a carbon footprint Oh, that's nice. I didn't know about that. As it were. So, yeah, it's, that's, that's, a, that's a good thing to obviously book in advance or you've got to pay £25 on the day of, of arrival. So it's not a massive jump in price, but it's always good to be prepared. And obviously I would, I'd, I'd book in advance. It's nice to pay less for things, I find. It is. There's plenty of options there for you. Literally, plane, train, car or coach. Or walk or cycle, as we found out. You can cycle in, which I think is a mental idea, and I would not advise that. <laughs> <laughs> I know it's for charity, but it just sounds mental. It's a, it is a long old slog. I I, I, look, I looked at it and thought about it one year, and I thought, no. Nah. Oh, you didn't. No, you're not convincing anybody. You never thought about it. Look, right. What goes on in my head stays in my head. You ain't got a clue. Right, I'll just let you. I'll let you in a little snippet that I had a thought about it, <laughs> but then I thought twice about it. Yeah, exactly. And made the right decision and got on the train instead. Yeah, or oh, they, they just got a car. Oh, you bought a car instead. Okay, fine. <laughs> yeah, I mean, for, for me, whilst the train was a good experience and is a good is um, a, a decent method because it saves the hassle of driving. Obviously, if you want to leave the car at home, but I find it a lot easier to just drive. Um, I love driving. I love driving up. Apart from 2019, my car decided it wanted to stall it and then not restart on the hill in the car park. So the moral of the story is not to buy a shit car. I didn't buy it, I got given it. Oh, well, there we are. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So um, you can tell us your do's and don'ts. Tell us something we've missed, any, any modes of transport we didn't cover. Or just give us your opinion on what we have just talked about. We would love to hear from you. We often hear from people who say, oh, I, I, you know, I was thinking about getting in touch with you, but didn't. <laughs> so if you're one of those people, do get in touch. We would love to hear from you. We really would. And we're nice. We're nice. We're normal, aren't we? Uh, just, well... <laughs> just send a message through the socials. 
uh, or at festpod.co.uk. Oh, God. I, do you know, I do that every show. Do, I can't say it. Festpod.co.uk. Not clay. Yeah, yeah. That's another thing. Uh, yeah. So just click on message uh, or look for Festpod on the socials. 